We cannot move. We're sorry. This car won't <laughs> let us move. <laughs> we we're not driving. He's trying to <laughs> Sir, there's no one there. <laughs> Sir, so sorry. There's lots of laughter going on in this video of a self-driving car there uh, in Phoenix getting pulled over by cops. At least getting redirected by a cop off his motorcycle, and he's slowly approaching. I'm not going to lie to you. First thing I thought was, yo, I'm ready to prepare to tell this guy, yo, I'm not driving it. Put down the gun and the taser and the baton. I have nothing to do with this. Or maybe they wouldn't even see anyone. Just get to shooting through the windshield. Who knows? It happens. But still, this is from a company called Waymo, and it's a self-driving car service. It's Uber without a driver. I guess that helps out without having to pay uh, someone to drive, except these self-driving cars, which I didn't know we were using in this capacity yet. They make mistakes. Here's an image uh, of the way these Waymo cars look. And uh, this originated up in San Francisco, of course, the tech area of San Francisco. So apparently if you see this car coming, you should understand it may not exactly know what's happening on the road. So according to the passenger in that video there with the cops pulling them over and checking them out, he said everything was fine until it came across this here parade. Johnny Romano was the guy. He said the car had already encountered the parade and that a police officer earlier and a police officer earlier and attempted to avoid it by essentially going around the block, but then ended up turning toward the front of the parade instead of away. Makes sense. It doesn't really know what's happening. Things are moving. A Waymo spokesperson told Insider that the company is using an uh, advanced machine learning to teach the vehicles how to respond to hand signal and construction signs instead of the normal things that the computer is just going to see. I'm not sure how they're going to tell that. Maybe how far away the person who's given hand signals would have to be for this to get picked up. But because of things like developing these extra things, I would assume that they probably shouldn't have these on the road yet. Also, they seem to uh, struggle when they run into public transportation, trolleys and trains and things like that. That sounds disastrous as well. So also this uh, video went out um, from a year ago of this driverless car, uh, made by a different company though, by the way. Uh, and it also appeared to run away from cops, which might be even more dangerous than just sitting there looking at them in front of them, watch. This morning, a sign of the times captured on camera. At first, it looks like a normal traffic stop until Ain't nobody in it. Watch closely as police look for a driver or any sign of human life in the car, but it turns out it's a driverless car, fully autonomous. Now watch as the officer steps away. The car appears to drive off. Crossing an intersection before stopping again, police were able to reach crews, which manually took control of the car that's being used in a test of a driverless rideshare program in San Francisco. Crews telling ABC News the car was not trying to speed off, but that our AV yielded to the police vehicle, then pulled over to the nearest safe location for the traffic stop as intended. Yo, call me the old man, Jessica, uh, but I'm still on the whole thing where I, we should drive manual transmission cars and definitely not with an empty seat in the driver's seat while I'm putting my life in danger based off of someone's computer program. Just saying. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying you should love the police, but I am saying I'm concerned about the cars in general. Uh, the optimal response being to leave and pull away from the police as a decision made by, I don't know, an AI with no human emotion is kind of hilarious to me. Uh, the robots might be all right, but uh, <laughs> how are we going to program cars to deal with this? How are we going to program cars to just say, you know, yes, officer, not resist arrest? Who pays the traffic ticket when uh, an autonomous vehicle is, is pulled over or does something against the law? We're going to see traffic ticket revenue go down dramatically. What are we going to replace that with? I don't know. Uh, is it your fault when your car gets pulled over and gets a ticket? I love watching the police have to struggle to deal with this problem, though, because they have implemented robots and artificial intelligence into their policing so heavily uh, to help them uh, catch criminals on the street, but really to have more of a surveillance state. All of these robots, you know, they have cameras all over them. Uh, we see the robot dogs being tested in L.A. It's terrifying. Uh, so the idea that the police have to confront this on the other side, I think is pretty cool to watch. You know what? This could lead to actually some of the 
come on. I, I, I had a slight bit of positivity coming, but let me go ahead and reel back first. Maybe it could real, uh, lead to some kind of actual reform when it comes to the way the police conduct things or say they're shooting up these uh, driverless cars when no one is in it. Huge companies that, of course, uh, bribe our politicians to do their own bidding all the time may go, hey, hold on. We got police officers shooting our, our equipment. This stuff is expensive. You guys have to slow this down. Defund the police. And they just might listen because that's who they listen to instead of humans that die at the hands of cops in many of these cases. But if you shoot up a car that costs them $80,000, who knows? Um, it might be a problem and they might change up their approach then. Or maybe cops would put on notice. If you see the Waymo, turn away. Let it do whatever the hell it wants. Just like the folks that make it.